Comic College Podcast. My name is Ryan, and back uh, back with me again because we did a short little interview for Whip and Egg. Now we're going to do an indie creator spotlight on Dr. Ben Anthony. We're going to talk comic books because we didn't have enough time to chat last time, and I wanted to get you back on. So welcome back to the show, dude. Oh, hell yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. So, you know, last time we didn't really dive too much into, like, your history of, like, how you got into comic books because, like, you know, we were here to talk about Whip and Egg. So... You know, for everybody listening, watching, share a little bit about yourself, you know, how you got into comic books, and then in turn, what made you decide you wanted to create comics yourself? I mean, you know, like, I've just always, ever since I was a little kid, you know, I've always had comics around, uh, Fantastic Four, Superman, you know, like, all the, uh, and, like, all the shows, too, you know, like, that's, that's the thing, like, when I was a kid, there was, like, like what the the old '60s Batman show was still around, and like the Wonder Woman show, the Incredible Hulk show, and and the Superman movies, and like Spider Man was on like a whole bunch of stuff on TV too, like Electric Company or something. So you know what I mean? Like I like always just grew up around comics, and really start like professionally got into them. You know, like you know, like really started like getting into like like reading them and collecting them and stuff like, you know, when I was like 13, 14 or whatever, when, uh, you know, I was there when the whole image, image started. I remember, you know, all the uh, waiting for like each, each first issue to come out and then like waiting like twice as long for the next issue. Like, God, where, where are they? You know, like, huh. you know, it was like when, that's, that's one of the things that's like, I find like so, amazing like the you know like the whole like online community like definitely like uh the people that all like know about the uh the image uh like grand design grand disaster and all the cartoonist yeah. fake stuff that was you know like that when image started it was just like such a huge like like everyone that was what like everyone talked about you know and it was just you know, mind blowing as a cat. I know. I wish I was. I wish I was a little bit older. But that I think I probably got into comic book. I mean, I was five when Image launched. So, right. you know, like I think I got a little. Like my first comic is from ninety one. So I'm assuming right. I got it in ninety one. Like I, I could be wrong though. My mom could have got it for me. And like I mean, back then you could find comic books that were like six, seven months old still on the newsstands you know like yeah nowadays don't even know what that means finding shit on a spinner rack at a, at a grocery store or something or a fucking nobody that's growing up now like my brother was you know he's 11 years younger than me he didn't have that experience either you know by the time he was right. born. so um but yeah i think yeah, they were everywhere as a kid like that was that was so easy difference. yeah it's so easy to find and i think that that you know i've often brought it up i've i think i've talked to creators i've talked to fellow fans like that i think they should be back there you know like they should be in grocery stores like create a cheaper comic you know a lower price point then if it's you know like maybe it's not the latest issue of batman or the latest issue of amazing spider-man right obviously you're not going to see image comics on the uh, there because like those are mostly for older audiences you don't want a six-year-old picking up like something that's got naked chicks in it right but if you create right. a cheaper price point an entry point that will lead people to comic book stores i didn't continue to get stuff at the grocery store no i looked for more and then i went to a comic book store and that's where the you you find more stuff and that's where you get back issues and shit like that and i think that uh i mean fuck Archie's got it on lockdown, right? They're they obviously they're making enough money that they're continuing to put their shit in, in grocery stores. Every single aisle I go check out at always have the Archie box. I just so probably nobody from DC or Marvel's listening to me right now, but I'm right. start fucking saying it every fucking time I talk to a creator. That shit needs to be in grocery stores. It needs to be at drug stores. It needs to be everywhere. If you want the industry to grow, quit fucking pigeonhole yourself in one type of, only one type of store it's only in fucking comic book stores maybe some it, stores. It, it blew me away like with all the like the movie theater stuff like there was never any kind of like uh you know like definitely like the local comic shop would do something like right you know like that opening weekend for like the new avengers or whatever like the comic shop would do something but like movie theaters wouldn't 
you know, wh- how hard would it be to have like a, a, you know, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't say like a spinner rack, but like some sort of like display thing, you know, like the new yeah. Star Wars movie opens. Have like, it just seems, doesn't it seem stupid? Star Wars comic, you know, everyone's and for, coming and, out. And then second of all, don't these stores want to make more money? Like, where the, what are you guys thinking? Like, I would think like, oh, this is another avenue to make money. Like you said, make an end cap, right? At a grocery store. Oh, wait, the new Spider-Man movie's out. Let's have a bunch of Spider-Man shit here and try to sell it. I, I mean, like, I mean, my kids always, well, not, she doesn't always ask me when we're in the grocery store because, like, there's not a lot of stuff to ask for. But if she saw stuff there, she oh, yeah. asked me for it. I used to bug the shit out of my mom. Hey, let me go over here real quick. Oh, can I get all of these? You know, maybe she give me a couple and a wizard magazine. I was always, you know, asking for the wizards also. But but let's let's talk about about your stuff. So, you know, you sent me quite a quite a collection of some self-published stuff you did. Um, all awesome. I really love it. I love that you wrote me uh explanation of, of what you were doing. Um, I, I really enjoy that. Thank you for doing that. I'm going extra step, but for everybody that hasn't seen your stuff doesn't have the cliff notes to your, to your work. Can you talk a little bit about how um, you first started self-publishing? Talk a little bit about the type of projects that you have put out, and then we'll talk about some of the more, more uh, current stuff that you're doing. Uh, well, let's see. So the first, the first thing I published was in like, was in 2011. And actually, I, don't, I didn't have any copies of it. There was just you know, like even simpler, like just those uh, one sheet of, of eight and a half inch, like printer paper, or whatever, fold in half and what you cut the top and then fold it in half again and you staple it. And it's a little like, yeah. you know, it's a short comic. Like it took me forever just to like figure out like how to do that. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. so it's like working on like my art and stuff like before that, but like, somehow just like the uh bridging that gap because like i always like i you know always read comics up until because you know that would have been like if i started reading them in the 90s and then like 2011 is when i like finally figured out how to like cut and fold a a piece of paper you know (laughs) (laughs) like i remember like just being like so just like i mean now you know like i sent you like whatever like this you know just like the little yeah, like just being able to do that, like at the time, would have been like, like I would have just been like, what? Oh my, how do I even get them, get the pictures like that small? Like, I didn't yeah. understand like like any of it. So you know, it was all just kind of uh, let's see, it was you know just based on like self taught. Like there was a lot of, and there, there still is like, but at the time there was a lot of like uh, sort of like blog posts and tutorials for how to uh you know just how to use like a photoshop program or you know any any sort of like just image manipulation software right to be able to right. get uh scan the art and get it to like reproduce uh the you know the right way or what you want to do with it so that was you know like 2011 it must, it must have been then it was because it was like a, a dinosaur comic it was a dinosaur and he was a detective mm-hmm. and they just eight people like that was the whole yeah you know how we how we solved all the cases you know but it was like you know just figuring out how to do how to draw how to use all the you know the computer scanner and then uh, at the time I think I used Photoshop 6 now I use like Clip Studio you know it does everything I need to do but yeah it's just it's it's been just like a constant like a constant learning process you know that's I think like part of like just sending you all this stuff it's like you know i have like like old copies laying around and it's like well yeah. you being like just like interested in comics like just the form you know what i mean like to me to me like i think that's always interesting to see like you know the progression of an artist you know yeah it's yeah like, no it's cool work and like <laughs> no i i love it i mean i think it's 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 cool to see like even just the different um the format of the way you were producing the different stuff as you progress all the way to your, you know, like the image grand design, like I can put them next to each other and I can, I can see like the growth as an artist too, of what you did. And that's really dope. Um, And then, you know, the weapon X stuff, 
uh, that you, that you got coming out. Um, I can't wait for that book to be in print. I'm so excited the pre-orders. So yeah, I think it's, uh, I just, I like the self-published stuff and I like seeing that it's, cause it's very punk rock. You know what I mean? Like you're doing this shit all yourself. You're not going to like presenting some big, like fancy fucking spending a bunch of money. And then it's like, oh, you spent all this money. And it's two pages. Cause I've gotten, I've seen stuff. It's literally like maybe four pages. And like, why did you spend so much money rather than you spend a little bit less money and giving me more pages, you know? And you like, that's a lot of stuff that you've, you've produced and, and you know, and you, um, and you talk about like the, the image or not image talk about the cafe ringside seats group and stuff. And I think that I, if I remember correctly, you said that kind of reignited you, like kind of gave, kind of gave you a lot more, um, Motivation is not the right word. I don't know. It got you kind of amped yeah. to start creating more stuff, right? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Like I was, I don't want to like, like spend the whole time talking about, you know, I was in this like big car accident, right? Ruined, you know, ruined like, I, you know, like my like walking, like I could walk, but it's like, walk up like I'm like a hundred now, you know, it's, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, and I had been, you know, because in comics, it's not like, it's not easy to like get into like comics and be able to like just have that be your, your career. So, you know, like, you know, I worked in restaurants, factories and stuff and kind of off, off the, uh, off the table now. So then in, in the middle of the summer is when I found the whole uh, cartoonist kayfabe group. You know, mm -hmm. I had, I had known like, uh, I had interviewed Jim like years ago when I did mini comics. And I, I don't think I've met Ed. Like, I think I saw him, but like, you know, like talked, but like, you know, I've always followed like their stuff. That's right, right. Whole, got a whole show. And, you know, it was like just watching it. And I remember the, it was like so funny with the, with, the, with the Grand Design book, like they were talking about it on the show. And I remember thinking like, man, I wish only I could have been in that. that that is like that would be the thing and like the next like week or whatever uh during one of like the jam nights because you know like they host like jam nights on facebook and everything like where everyone just draws hangs out and mm -hmm. uh, somehow i i uh i got invited and they're like you should definitely i think i was oh. i was working on that uh i have like i did a an interview comic with ed brubaker from like a it was like a dream I had where yeah, I yeah. <laughs> in the dream. Like it's, I don't know if that's like meta or I don't know what that, you know, <laughs> but uh, I was like working at that on that. And like, I, I showed it to him and they were just like, Oh shit, you know, shit, you've got to be in this. We're doing this the image grain design thing. Like that's just off like bonkers. Cause like I draw Ed Brubaker, like, yo, if you fuck out. Back. Right, <laughs> he's yoked the fuck out. Fucking like like Walker, huh? Yeah, it's so. Cool. I love it. So, uh, so yeah. So you know what I mean? Like that was like it, it was definitely like the, the encouragement. You know what I mean? Like, like look look at it. And be like, you know, maybe maybe I should start doing comics again. Like, this is definitely I like doing it. And then you know, getting like just like that feedback of like, yeah, this is definitely people people dig this it's funny you know like that's so yeah so you know what i'm saying like that definitely i mean the whole this i'm saying like throughout 2020 like you know it was you know, everyone's still like you know i mean there's there's people that are still like in like lockdowns or whatever quarantine i know it's like, crazy dude it's uh, i mean not not to like you know obviously like it's in quarantine it's in quarantine you know what i mean like there's too many places where there's not uh you know outbreaks and people not doing it and you know you know all the all the yeah all the shit yeah no i mean at first like i was fine kind of being locked down I'm like i'll just get through my read pile you know whatever right. <laughs> and i did i got through my read pile and then and then uh yeah i started buying up too much shit online and then it just grew exponentially but yeah and then after a while you're like i need to get the fuck out of here i can't <laughs> more so i know a lot of cartoonists you know like yourself and other people like you could either turn it into a negative or you turn it into a positive and i think for the most part a lot of creators you know like turned it into a positive they got a lot of work done they they started doing working on stuff that they had on the back burner 
Um, so we already talked about Weapon X, so we're not going to talk about that today. Um, but I know that you you got some other stuff in the works as well. I want to talk about that. Thick Comics kind of briefly touched on that, um, but you didn't. We didn't really dive too much into that. I was wondering if you could kind of talk a little bit about that. Just my uh, new thick stuff. Com thick com yeah. yeah, let's talk Thick Comics first. Yeah, so that's just uh, it's you know, what I'm using them on, uh, on webtoons. I'd like it, I'd like it to work up to be more of like a weekly comic, but so far it's been more of like a bi-weekly comic or okay. every third weekly comic. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's definitely a bunch of work, like, you know, a bunch to make it, but it's, uh, I like the idea of like transcribing dreams into comics. I have a lot of dreams that are all set like in a comic book shop. Like it's, it's something that like, I've just recognized like, like my the whole time I've like ever read comics you know like I always like dream about like just this shop that you like you walk in and there's just all the all the whatever comics you're looking for and like stuff you never knew like just realizing like I've always dreamt about that you know what I mean like it's been like a constant uh you know like place that's always you know so I was like man that'd be, that'd be kind of cool if like I just did you know drew some of those dreams that I have about them and then, uh, and then also I'm like exploring the life of the uh, you know, talking rabbit that is the, what would you say, like caretaker? I don't know, you know, like there's, there's people that work there, you know, like, okay. um, yeah, yeah. so, you know, it's like a whole, you know, it's like a whole like little world or whatever. So uh, <laughs> I just, I, I, I hear myself talking and I feel like I sound like I'm just absolutely insane. Like they're just gonna be like, I mean, oh. you're not insane. No, dude. I, I mean, no, I don't think you sound insane. I, I'm just, I, I'm absorbing everything you're saying. So I don't think you sound crazy. You're explaining what your story is. So, I mean, I had a night, I had a nightmare the other night about the comics. I worked at one and uh, right. I've like taken over like the online shit and my nightmare, I think it was a lot. No, not last night. The night before just somebody fucking slammed a pile of variants on my fucking desk. And like you need to get this listed by the end of the day. I'm like, I was like, fuck you. And I fucking, I fucking took all the variants and I just fucking threw all these incentive one in fifties, one in one. I threw them on the fucking phone. I'm like, I'm not doing this shit. I quit. <laughs> I can't deal with this shit anymore. <laughs> because like, fuck yeah, dude. I mean, um, you know, I mean, I think we all have. When you work so many hours a day at a job, you're gonna eventually dream about it. I've, I've, yeah. I've I'm working too, so I'm working at resident. One time the two jobs merged in my dream. It was it was the most it was the craziest, weirdest shit. It was like my boss from the shop was at the restaurant and like oh, yeah. talking to me about something that had nothing to do with what I was doing. I'm like, I, what the fuck is happening, dude? Um, restaurant dreams are the worst. Like like, you know, like running around like from the kitchen back to the back storeroom and like yeah, I ha I hear the sound of the ticket machine constantly <laughs> when I'm just like sitting in my house reading quiet. There's no noise, and I'll just hear the that, or I'll hear the tablets going off, and there's nothing happening. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I'm, I I love the thick comic stuff that you sent. I lo I love um, I love the image grand design story. I'm I'm excited to see Weapon X. I know I've seen some uh, some of the art, but I haven't been able to read it yet. But what else do you have in the works? I know you have a couple couple other things in the works. You also told me you're um, you got a signing coming up too. That you're pretty stoked. Yeah, so that's so that's the other two things. Like, is I'm I'm working on uh, this giant size sixty three, mm -hmm. which you know is I know like you do, but like for anyone who's like not in the group, immediately familiar with the uh, the nineteen sixty three comics that were all written by uh alan moore and drawn by uh rick beach and steve is set and dave gibbons and everybody and chester yeah. brown chester brown thinking steve is set and one of those like really like, yeah it's okay, uh, I didn't know. there's one of the it's just one of the issues it's, it's like the weirdest i mean it looks awesome you know but it's just like you wouldn't think like chester brown would it be anything like Steve Bissett's work? Like it's, That's, I mean, it works. That's what I'm mean, saying. Like, it's, yeah, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> so we've got like the license from Steve Bissett for mm -hmm. his characters from 1963. Um, so 
it's all through, I'm not sure if it's technically through 100% comics or if it's just through William, William Hoffnecht is the, the editor, right? Right, 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 yeah. Like, I'm not sure if it's technically through like 100% comics or it's... I think it is. Uh, but I know it's like he licensed, he got like permission from Steve to uh, use the characters in print. Right. Well, his so maybe, characters that Steve has set owns. Right, right. right. The ones yeah, that he, I think he couldn't get permission from Rick Veach, I think he told me. Yeah, the whole it's Rick Veach and it, it's, it's, they're not. I get it. Yeah, I get it. Whatever. It's, it's fine. I mean, I think it's cool the fact that Steve Bissett was like, yeah, do it. Yeah, like, I, I definitely, really, and really like, cool this, person. this is the way I feel with like, with Alan Moore. Like, why would, you know, like, I don't see why you want to purposely go and like, Trying to anger him more, you know, like why? why no, leave, like, leave. people like they're <laughs> like kind of like fuck with them, like yes, I, I know, and, it, and that's the thing. Like you, I see like inter like people like getting interviews with Alan Moore, and like just asking like just dumbass. I'm like, of course he's gonna like 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 be pissed at him or like you know like just so. I would fucking. <laughs> Yeah, I don't even know what I would do if I had the chance to talk to Alan Moore. I feel like it would take me probably thirty minutes to even open my mouth. That's insane. Like, is is your first question going to be like, "So, with superheroes, let me ask you, what you, have, yeah. What do you think about?" Yeah. You so how I mean? so, how salty are you at the fact that you got screwed over by DC? You know, like no, like, don't ask you that shit, dude. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But so you know, it's. So that's what I'm saying. It's like half the half the characters are not are owned by Steve Bissett, and those are the right, ones. right. The other ones just it's not up for debate or whatever. Or so um, a lot of it they've people have created like sort of uh, alternate universe versions of it that take the place of those characters because all of it you know breaks down to what like uh, like is that archetypes or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're archetypes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> The characters in the Fantastic Four are the same characters in what, like Teen Titans or something, or you know, like mm -hmm. you know, it's the same. Which are the same ones in uh, would be the family one in in the Image books. Cyber Force were they all related or something? Maybe I don't think so. I don't know. There was there was a lot of I know there was a lot of books that had like some like family or like it would be like you know they're all like just different analogs for the different. Right, right, right. Which we call Justice League, you know, the whole, you know, that's the whole uh, 1963 thing. So okay. it's pretty, I'm, I'm excited. I explain it like absolutely horribly, you know, but <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm excited because it's like, I've got uh, a character that's like, has like six panels in the whole series, right? And so it's like, I'm, I get to kind of like define like, what happened with him when he's not in those panels and i think that's that's like that's pretty cool you know like and, and yeah i think part of it, you know it's yeah i think it's a dope project it's something i didn't even know about prior to i don't know let's, let's just say a year okay I, I can't i remember exactly when i discovered the series but it was only within the last year and it was i think it was because of the kayfabe channel i believe that's how i discovered it. i was like what the fuck alan moore Steve Bissett and Rick Veach wrote this book. Like, what the fuck? So, like, and then it yeah. was almost impossible for me to find the sixth issue um, for a while because that one was like the lowest print run. Um, but I found it and, you know, I waited to read it until I could find that sixth issue, which was very hard because I wanted to dive into it. But it's just really awesome. I mean, you go into the ads, you go into the letters pages, and like, it's just, it's, it's the full package, you know what I mean? And right. I'm really glad that that's another thing like that's cool about the the group is that like they answered the call for the image screen design, right? They answered right. the call for the 63 annual because I feel like that might've been mentioned on the Kayfabe channel by Ed and Jim, maybe where they were kind of like poking the, kind of poking the bear like, oh, you guys should do this. You guys yeah, yeah, no, cause they went over I think they oh. went over like each of the issues, I think, at one point. And then when they it did. gets to like the sixth one, you know, where it ends with uh Shaft showing up in, in the 1963 yeah. universe or yeah. Like, what happened? You know, we need to know. Yeah, I mean, I'm very excited to you know to see to see that um 
I think it's going to be an awesome project. All the other projects from the group that are coming up are, are really dope. I'm glad I'm going to be a part of, well, I'm helping edit on the C3 um, annual. And then, uh, you know, Darkest Image, obviously. So I'm excited about that, too. Um, but what, what else uh, you got cooking, dude? What else you got in the world? Um, I know there's something I'm doing for, like, I've got, like, a local writing club. I'm doing something for them. My buddy uh, Mark Wessler's book is coming out. And mm-hmm. it's going to be the first, uh, like, store exclusive for Robot Zero Comics, which is, like, my local local shop geneva ohio right mm-hmm. what's up tony <laughs> uh, so it's their first like official uh store exclusive book release so they invited me if i wanted to come too and and a couple other guys um matt horick i don't know if you another name e craig russell and uh and tom shioli uh so i don't know if I'm fucking jealous, dude. Yeah, I know. Like, I'm just like, are you kidding? Like, do I want to come and hang out? Yes. Like, I want to hang out with that. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I have something that day. I won't be able to make yeah. it. No, I'm... <laughs> so. Dope. Very happy for you. It's cool. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. That's pretty cool. And I think it's the weekend before that, because I think that's a Saturday. Yeah, it's a Saturday. The Saturday and Sunday before that is... Uh, virtual space con right which is normally it's like in columbus ohio it's the small small press and alternative comics expo and i think last year they just did it online this year they they're having it online which is going to be i guess july 10th and 11th and then uh you're going to have like a, still have a physical one but later in uh number six six and seventh i think but so I've I've got a virtual table for that too. I'm gonna I'm I think I want to try and figure out how to do like stream like like inking like I think people would dig that like I do because you know like I do all my work like much like traditional or whatever you know. Yeah, did you try? Have you thought about Twitch? Right, right. That's what I'm saying. Because I know that uh, Jamie Jones, he's another member in the group. Uh, he does the book, The Baboon. Oh, yeah. he's been he's been doing like some live streaming of like drawing he's like i'm already drawing so why not you know like why not just do it on twitch and then you can kind of right. talk to people and stuff and yeah i think it'd be definitely a good avenue man definitely yeah, I, like I could watch people fucking draw you know yeah I don't, I don't mind it i'll have it in the back you know i could have it while i'm like doing something and like just like kind of watching because i can't draw so it's cool to watch people kind of create something from nothing you know it's really dope but yeah, uh, so before we get out of here, I would love to uh, get some recs, dude. What are you currently reading? What are you currently into creator-wise or comic book-wise? Like what, what a... Uh, <laughs> let me grab one. So I just I just got this in the mail like a little bit ago. It's like multiple war ads. That's uh, the Brandon Graham stuff, right? Yeah, it's yeah, from, I just saw that at my shop. I haven't read it yet, though. Yeah, I don't know. Like, somehow I missed it. Like, it's from uh, October 2013. And, like, I have, like, the other series. And then I figured out that I didn't get this somehow. And I was, like, I was confused. So I ordered that. And and I had to replace, because uh, I haven't had it forever. I got Sandman number 50 because it's by... Uh, by P. Craig Russell, and it's got to be like this one of my favorite favorite stories, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Besides that, I mean, I've been reading a bunch of uh, profit issues from like that uh, the relaunch. I've never read it, but because of you, I, I, I hunted down the first trade so that I could kind of read up on it. Is this? It's not, it's not often, but there is, like, a couple, like, weird little shout-outs where, like, it has, like, like bad rock in the future. Oh, okay. Like, what, okay, yeah, because I only got the first volume. I haven't, I haven't, like, yeah, uh, is, through yet. That's the last, issue 43? Yeah, 43. Okay. I'm not sure where that falls in the, in the volumes or whatever, but, yeah, it's, 
it gets crazy you know what i'm saying and like the one thing with the with the issues was it had uh each of them had like back pieces too by just like random unrelated like stories but uh see the other one i've been reading the uh the orphan and the five beasts was it the legend the orphan james orphan and the five Stoker. beasts by james soko it's so annoying i just found out issue five is not coming out until september yeah see i haven't or issue three i'm sorry issue three so issue two has been out in issue right. three, not coming out for like a few months it's like fuck that man. see i didn't hear that i i wondered or like if i was somehow like missing it or and i know he i had uh i had him save me the was he in that Avengers Heroes Reborn or whatever? He did oh my that God. With that with with Jason Aaron. That I fucking, haven't gotten it yet, but it's dude, it's insane. It's fucking. You know. It is like it's too good to be a Marvel comic. You know what yeah, I mean? It's I, I saw not the picture right. of him on Thanos, and I was just like, yes, yes, that's his his like depiction of Rocket and like is a spaceship like or like a gun that rocket makes out of Groot it's just like I'm like what am I fucking looking at right now this is this is just phenomenal um yeah, he's so good yeah so that's that's what I'm saying pretty much any anything by Stoko that he puts out I'm gonna grab it you know that that's that's the thing like I'm not I don't have like too many that are like that I get like consistently I got like that Grant Morrison uh Green Lantern run but mm -hmm. that's over I probably read much. I probably read a little bit too much. I think right. that's I think that's what my problem. That's why my read pile is so big because I I think it it's hurt it hurts me in the sense that I work in a shop because then when I'm like I'm just like walking around or whatever I'm like oh I haven't seen that before oh, I better take that home to read and uh, and then the, the pile just fucking grows and grows and grows. And uh, like I, 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 every once in a while, I'm like, oh, maybe I should just cut my pull list. Maybe I should just like drop that down. And then it's like, no, oh, but this book's coming out. I have to add that. You know, like the this, it's just oh, never yeah. ending. it's never ending, dude. Um, but I mean, there is a lot of great shit coming out though. If, you know, like it's 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 such an exciting time to be a comic book fan because it is something for everyone. Whether it's indie cartoonists like yourself putting out really dope work, all the stuff from the group, right? All the all the cartoonists in there got Image, you got Dark Horse, DC and Marvel have some hits, not all of it, right? But like everybody is doing something good, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like maybe it's yeah. not the level, maybe it's not like the amount of stuff because like when Marvel's putting out sixty titles, DC's putting out sixty titles, you're not going to have all of them be really good, but it's right. You know. But you know, there's always really good fucking gems. I think the you know you mentioning the heroes were born. That I was very skeptical on that, but fuck, dude, it was it was really a fun superhero comic. The best Jason Aaron Marvel stuff since his Thor ended. So, but yeah, he's, he's Jason Aaron's as we said. He's... <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's. I love Jason. I, I got. I fucking love Jason Aaron. Um, but anyways. All right. Uh, so before I do let you go, if you want to real quick, you know, plug, shoot some plugs where we can find you, where we can find your stuff. And I will drop all the links down below. All right. Well, I got everything. Everything's just on the, uh, what is that? Link tree. Link, yeah. Link tree for, for thick comics. And then that's where uh, Instagram is thick comics. Just, it's just like the regular, the regular spelling rather than go there. Yeah. Double C. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not good with spelling, so I'm not good with misspelling on purpose. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I would say. Just use use the uh, the link tree. It's got it goes to my Instagram, the webtoons. Um, I'm updating those as we go. Uh, I'm going to put a bunch of the like older stuff I had. Like, you know, like I did a bunch of like weird interview comics back like years ago. Yeah, I want to see those for sure. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's stuff that like I would be, it, it's easy enough just to like put it online, put it on the webtoons or on Instagram or whatever. And to me, I think, I think that's really like something I don't think enough people like take advantage of is the whole like just digital comics, like people, people reading like that, like. That's definitely definitely the way to 
way it's going but uh yeah yeah i mean yeah, it's no, just it's another crazy. avenue definitely just uh just use the link tree all my, my comics on there all right cool so, all right man well you know thanks again for for chatting with me for another time and uh definitely have you back on again whenever you want to help promote stuff or whenever we're i'm sure i'll do more videos promoting more of the projects like i kind of did with weapon egg i want to do that for 63 as well it's gonna be pretty cool like, yeah it's gonna be dope so for everybody listening and watching make sure you hit those links down below and um yeah dude thanks uh thanks for the chat talk to oh, you yeah.